Hey creatives, how are you? Long time. Happy New Year. I hope everyone is well. Everyone is enjoying this prosperous already what the fuck New Year. (laughs) Anyway, I'm walking and I just thought I'd do a bit of babbling. There were some things on my mind in terms of why I wrote a book, um, in terms of taking my self-published, self-publishing journey. Um, what my passion and my purpose is there and just being able to find out how I can better help people while I'm helping myself I know how to help people in tattoos that's like that's light work (laughs) but being able to reach beyond myself outside of tattoo to help other people is where I am I'm working on a book funnel so that that way I can replicate myself and reach more people and share my story because I do believe in it and I do believe people need to hear it except I'm used to just talking with pictures and cool colors and then with that what I end up doing is being able to attract people who vibrate with those colors or those images Um, but using words is fucking hard. (laughs) Anyway, I thought I'd talk about that today because I launched my journal, my 365 journal, aside from just thinking about my passion and purpose and such. And I was on Twitter and I just started kind of purging where I started my self-publishing journey, which was literally with a planner. A 90 day project planner um, and I did that planner because I kept doing these pages because I needed self accountability I needed self accountability simply because my dad had passed I was grieving still a new entrepreneur had my business like literally I opened my business in 2016 he passed in 2017 so everything around me was in infancy stages and the last conversation that we had before he passed we were on the phone and we were talking about my financial woes and finances is a big 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 huge huge anxiety wall for me like a what the fuck anxiety wall for me um for a number of reasons of course a lot of it stems back to actually being Um, from the hood and not having and wanting to work so that I could have and provide for myself and one of the things that I said when I left was I ain't never coming back here of course they say never say never so I was young when I said it so it doesn't count don't judge me (laughs) Um, I do realize that I could get back there at any point in time and I could survive and thrive however do I really want to go back there no not really So finances is actually a big bane of my existence in terms of anxiety. I have a lot of trauma surrounding finances that I'm working through. So anyway, my dad was a big black man with good credit. You know how rare that is? That's just rare. So he was always big on making sure um, I considered the things that I needed to consider to be financially stable. Um, as an entrepreneur that's the one thing that he was like that was his pain point that was his thing that was his jam Um, because you know as a dad as a parent every parent wants to make sure their child can provide for themselves once you send them out into the world it made him really nervous he was very proud that I'm an artist don't get it twisted but it made him really nervous that I was stepping out on art and I was stepping out on art full time unapologetically to make my way Um, so all of that said I was doing well 2016 20 to 2017 was a fucking boss my numbers looked good and then all of a sudden blood out I'm in Japan I get a call my dad says um, you know my dad calls and I text him I let him know that 
I could not pick up the phone because I was in fact in Japan and I needed to make sure um, you know I had minutes for emergency well what I didn't know was it was pretty much an emergency he texted me and he said be safe baby girl so I thought he was doing his dad thing like what okay cool and it wouldn't be until months later not months months that sounds like a long time but not months later but maybe about a month later and I found out my dad was hospitalized with two forms of cancer gallbladder and prostate cancer and I had less than a week from the time that I found out that my dad was in the hospital and the first time I visited him in the hospital I literally had less than a week to actually care for him to actually be by his side to see him and to say goodbye um, and that was huge because while I am cynical and you know I think I think death is a part of life so I have a I, I, I'd say I have a weird way of looking at death sometimes anyway it was weird because in grieving you know I was also grieving but I also felt an enormous amount of guilt because I almost missed my dad's death and that in turn made me feel guilty because I'm not where I want to be in terms of business now sensically he understands I'm not where I want to be because I'm new to business and you know life just kind of happened um and I have to navigate through that so I'm sure he's not looking down and judging me I'm sure if he is judging me, it's in my favor, as it has always been. Um, Nothing negative. But I still feel or felt that I needed to make sure I had some type of self-accountability embedded. I said on Twitter that I really do, I used my dad as a measuring stick. So I used him as an accountability measure. Um, And when he passed, I realized that I have to become more self-accountable. Not only that, but being an entrepreneur, you don't always have somebody around. And not just being an entrepreneur, I'm the founder of my own shit. Who's gonna gonna check me, boo? So I had to make sure that I had processes in place, which included creating this journal. Um, I started creating pages and then I realized, oh shit, other people could use this too. I started creating the pages specifically out of needing color coding, certain things that I needed for the fact that I need to focus. I need to focus. It's going to be a lot of information on one page and I don't want to trigger anxiety and overwhelm, but I still need to process all of these things that need to happen. So I started making color coded pages based on my Hobo Nietzsche and bullet journaling. Um, based on my spreads and what I actually use to do my daily planning. And I would do that and that was very cathartic. And then I realized someone else could possibly use this. So I made a 90 day planner because why 90 days? That's one quarter. And sometimes it only you only need 90 days to reach a major milestone. So 90 day planner not only that but mentally with dealing with grief and such I needed to break things down for myself seeing a 365 planner was a lot so I broke it down into quarters so I could see it by quarter and then you know I could see those sections by months and then those sections by weeks and then those smaller sections by days and I could manage alongside all of the overwhelm all of the anxiety all of the guilt, all of the grief. Show my dad, we got it, we out here, I'm committed. And after completing my first year, I decided that the best cathartic healing journey would be to actually revisit my story to where I am now because I felt like by the time I made that commitment to know we're committing to this, we're good, Dad. We're gonna be fine. I felt a great deal of release there. And then from releasing from that, I wanted to write him a love letter. 
to let them know that I'm okay. Um, and anxiety and dealing with a lot of things, tangibles for me is a big thing. So um, having a tangible where I could look over my life, not only that, um, but just in case I wasn't able to speak for any reason, um, just in case I'm triggered for any reason, just in case I'm going through something, but somebody needed to hear the word, somebody needed to hear the story, I wrote a book. <laughs> then, um, my memoir, Shot Gal, we've talked about it plenty of times on this podcast. I hope you've picked it up by now. Um, Shot Gal is actually not just a love letter to my dad to let him know that I've committed to this process and will be okay. I'm going to survive as an entrepreneur. Dad, we got this. Um, it was a love letter to myself to remind myself that I got this, that everything that I need is already in me. I am my own little toolbox and I have everything that I need to make sure this success is a journey or this, <laughs> this, this journey is a success. Hi, creative li- dyslexia, that this journey is a success and that I could enjoy the journey regardless of all the bumps and bruises. Now, a book is tangible for me because, or a tangible piece for me to remind myself that I'm still gonna be able to make it regardless of the bumps and bruises because of course in entrepreneurship, there's a lot of shit that happens (laughs) that you just don't plan for it to happen, but you have to be okay with, with that weird, unanswered, ambiguous space. Um, And you have to be okay with knowing that everything's not going to go your way. You have to release. You just kind of have to understand that those are some things that are going to, that's going to happen. Now, I say entrepreneurship, but that's just a fact of life. So at the end of the day, it's kind of something that still applies to just everyday life. So, It was a love letter to myself. It's my tangibles to remind myself of everything that I've actually been able to overcome, endure, all that good stuff. And what I found was, (laughs) I've made it to the wish that I had, which was to thrive, not just survive, not just make it, not just be on autopilot, but one one day I am actually up. I am actually going to be able to thrive in what I do and that's where I am I would have never known honestly had I not taken the time to write my memoir had I not taken the time to reflect how many amazing things I've done I would have never popped the top on the fact that I downplay my greatness and that I just I haven't taken time to process all the great things I've already done and to be able to share them with the world in confidence. (sighs) I didn't expect my book to show me that (laughs) when I actually wrote it. I wrote it as a love letter. (laughs) Um, And to show the world who I am. But I guess part of who I am is I was on autopilot. um, Regardless of what I'd been told or regardless of any fear of my choices, of being an artist and making it on art alone, that anything that would have pushed itself into the space of me having imposter syndrome actually triggered the fight in a fight or flight type of situation. And I'm a hell of a fighter. So I've been able to survive on autopilot. And now, 17 years into my professional life actually more than 20 years into my professional life but 17 years in tattoo we'll say that into my professional life I'm finally at thriving it took a while to get here and I say that and I'm dropping these numbers because somebody's going to listen to this and if you are that somebody Just know that you can't really compare your journey to know or, you know, to anybody else's timeline. I know people who hit thriving years out of the womb. I know people who sacrifice morale. 
and sacrifice, you know, their own personal morals and 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 chutzpah. I don't know what other word to use right now to be able to thrive and take a shortcut. I'm pretty lucky and blessed that I didn't have to do any of that. That I took the long road. I've enjoyed the the journey so much that I hadn't even looked at the process a lot in my journey. I was just on autopilot and just doing my journey. So now I'm here. I'm excited about the thriving part of my journey. And I want to reach back and I want to make sure that my book lends itself to people who are in the place that I was once in. Where you go from something like grieving or managing any type of mental incapability to just committing to the process. Trusting it, starting, organizing yourself, and following through. I want to make sure that my story reaches people who are only in survival mode right now, but trying to reach it, trying to make it to thriving, regardless of any mental incapabilities. Because trust me, after this story, I'm sure you know that you can definitely do it. You can definitely manage a business. You can definitely manage your life. You could definitely create the life you love that you would wanna lead. You can definitely give yourself permission regardless of all the mental incapabilities that anybody, any of us have. We can definitely do it. And I want people to know that. I want more people to actually know that that's something that can be done. That you're amazing and that everything that you want is right there inside of you. Like literally in your own wheelhouse, literally. And all you have to do is tap into it. Don't worry, I'm still tapping into my magic. And as I tap in more, I wanna still reach back and share more with you. But for now, I wanna be your accountability pal. I wanna know how I can actually help you through your survival mode into thriving. Like, what does survival look like for you right now? And what would thriving look like for you in the future? Let's chat. Hit me up in my messages, leave me a comment. Let's get this work. And we can make it do what it do from there. We can make magic. If you want, feel free to check out littleinkplay.shop for Shop Gal the Memoir, my book, also my newly released 365 Day Planner, and my 90 Day Project Planner, both of which are undated so that you can start wherever you are. That's on purpose because I want you to be able to start wherever you are. So if you get this thing in the middle of the year and you're ready to start then, Don't be discouraged or think you have to wait till January to get the full use out of any of these planners. You don't have to. Start where you are now. Start giving yourself permission. Start putting your things down. Start writing down your goals, organizing your thoughts. Do some brain dumps and hit your girl up on her email so I can be your accountability pal. I want to make sure you got the goods to be amazing. We can all do this together. Let's get this glow up, sis. Holla.